Hi guys, in this video we'll look at non-zero remainders, the remainder theorem, examples, and then we'll finish with a summary. Let's consider the case of non-zero remainders from a division of polynomials. We have seen that we can use the factor theorem to help us factorise expressions by looking at divisors which leave zero remainders. Namely, less than we have our function of x being the function 4x squared minus 7x minus 2. Then if we examine in particular f of 2, then we're going to get 4 lots of 2 squared minus 7 lots of 2 minus 2. And this is equal to 16 minus 14 minus 2, which is equal to 0. Therefore, we conclude by the factor theorem that x minus 2 is a factor of f of x. And therefore, we can factor out the x minus 2, and now f of x is going to become x minus 2, and then we must have a 4x, and then we have a plus 1. However, in general, we often end up with a non-zero remainder when dividing a polynomial expression by a factor of the form x minus c. Consider now dividing x squared plus 4x minus 3 by x minus 1. In particular, this x minus 1 is of the form x minus c. When we do this, we get our result as x plus 5, and then we have a plus 2 divided by x minus 1. This quantity 2 is our remainder from the division. There is a shortcut for finding the remainder explicitly when dividing by a factor of x minus c by using the remainder theorem. Let's say we're dividing x cubed minus 4x plus 1 by x plus 3. Then if we want to calculate the remainder that we get when performing this division, then we use the remainder theorem. So what exactly is the remainder theorem? We've seen that we can find the remainder when a polynomial is divided by an expression x minus c by using polynomial long division. Let's say in this case we have our x squared plus 4x plus 1, and we're dividing it by x minus 1. We do our x squared over x, and this gives us an x. Then we multiply and get an x squared minus x. Then we subtract. This gives us a 5x. We bring down the plus 1. We divide 5x by x and get a plus 5 up here. We then multiply, and we're going to get a 5x, and then we have a minus 5. Then we subtract, and we get a 6. And therefore we found that the remainder, when doing the division, is equal to 6. When dividing a general polynomial function f of x by a factor x minus c, we can form an equation involving the remainder as a function. We have our polynomial f of x, and this is going to be equal to our x minus c expression multiplied by some function q of x. This will be a polynomial. And then we have a plus r of x. Just to clarify again, the f of x, q of x, and r of x are all going to be polynomial expressions. But in particular, the q of x is the quotient function. This is the result we get at the top after doing the division. And the r of x is going to be our remainder function. As x minus c has index 1, and the remainder must have an index less than the divisor's index, we can deduce that the remainder is a constant. This is because if our remainder function had a term with a power of x, like an x or an x squared, and so on, then that can be put into the q of x. And so as a result, because we have specifically our x minus c in general being our divisor with index 1, this gives us that r of x must be a constant. We'll call it r, i.e. we have a remainder with index 0, our constant. Similarly to when using the factor theorem, we substitute a relevant value of x to help us deduce our general result. We now have that our f of x can be written as x minus c multiplied by q of x plus r, since our r of x is a constant. And then we can substitute in, in particular, c, and we get f of c is going to be equal to c minus c multiplied by q of c, and then we have the plus r. All we have done is to put in a c everywhere we see an x. But c minus c gives us a 0 for this term, and we have a 0 plus r. And hence we find 
that f of c is equal to r. This general result for finding remainders directly is known as the remainder theorem. We can summarize the remainder theorem as follows. If a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus c, the remainder is f of c, as we found above. But in general, if a polynomial f of x is divided by ax plus b, the remainder is f of minus b over a. This is our remainder theorem. As a result, when finding the remainder after f of x is divided by c, or ax plus b, it's enough to just calculate f of c or f of minus b over a. As some examples, let's find the remainder after dividing f of x equals x squared plus 5x minus 1 by x minus 1. We have our x minus c, where c is 1, so all we need to do is to consider f of 1. This is, of course, 1 squared plus 5 lots of 1 minus 1, and this gives us 5. Similarly, the remainder after dividing f of x equals 2x squared plus 1 half by 2x minus 1 is the following. This is of the form ax plus b, with a equals 2 and b equals minus 1. And so we need to consider f of minus, and we have our b being minus 1, and we divide by a, which is 2. So we consider f of 1 half, and this is equal to 2 lots of 1 half all squared plus a half. And this gives us for our remainder 1. Note that the factor theorem is a special case of this remainder theorem in general. If our remainder is 0, then we deduce that the x minus c or x plus b is a factor. Let's take a look at some examples. Our first example asks us to find the remainder after 6 minus 5x minus 2x squared is divided by x plus 3. Our first step is to recall the remainder theorem for dividing by a divisor of the form x minus c. If we take our f of x and we are dividing this by x minus c in general, then the remainder is found by f of c. Our second step is to define the dividend as a function f of x. We're going to let our f of x be our given function, i.e. 6 minus 5x minus 2x squared. Our third step is to substitute the relevant value into the function f of x. Let's say that our x plus 3 that we are dividing is equal to the x minus c. And this gives us that c must be equal to minus 3. Therefore, we need to consider our f of c, which is going to be f of minus 3. And this is going to be equal to 6 minus 5 lots of minus 3 minus 2 lots of minus 3 all squared. Our last step is to calculate the required remainder. We have that the remainder is going to be as above. We have a 6 plus 15 minus 18, and this gives us 3. Our second example asks us to find the remainder after 3x cubed minus 9x squared plus 10 is divided by 3x plus 2. Our first step is to recall the remainder theorem for dividing by a divisor of the form ax plus b. If we take our f of x and we divide by, and we divide by in general, ax plus b, then we can find the remainder by calculating f of minus b over a. Our second step is to define the dividend as a function f of x. We're going to let our function f of x be equal to the given polynomial, 3x cubed minus 9x squared plus 10. Our third step is to substitute the relevant value into the function f of x. We have our 3x plus 2 has the form ax plus b. So we set it equal to it and we look for the values of a and b. By comparing, we see that a is equal to 3 and that b is equal to 2. Now our remainder is given by f of minus b over a. So this is going to be equal to f of minus 2 over 3 by using the values of a and b. So therefore we have 3 lots of minus 2 thirds all cubed minus 9 lots of minus 2 thirds squared plus 10. Our last step is to calculate the required remainder. Our remainder is going to be equal to, by calculating the value as given above, 46 over 9. Our last example 
tells us that the polynomial 2x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 5 has a remainder of 8 when divided by x minus 1 and a remainder of 2 when divided by 2x plus 1. We're asked to find the values of the constants a and b. Our first step is to recall the remainder theorem. When a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus c, we have that the remainder is given by f of c. And in general, when we divide by ax plus b, the remainder is f of minus b over a. Our second step is to define the dividend expression as a function f of x. The polynomial 2x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 5 has remainder 8 when divided by x minus 1 and remainder 2 when divided by 2x plus 1. We're going to let our f of x be our given polynomial above despite having a and b unknown, namely 2x cubed plus ax squared plus bx plus 5. Our third step is to form an equation in a and b by substituting the value relevant to the divisor x minus 1 into f of x. When in particular our f of x is divided by x minus 1, we have the remainder is going to be given by f of 1. And therefore we use our function f of x we defined above, and we know that the remainder is 8, so 8 is equal to f of 1. And we can substitute in 1 to our function, and this gives us 2 lots of 1 cubed, plus a lots of 1 squared, plus b lots of 1, plus 5. This gives us a plus b plus 7. And therefore we can rearrange and get that a plus b is equal to 1 by subtracting the 7. And this is going to be our first equation. Our fourth step is to form another equation in a and b by substituting the value relevant to the divisor 2x plus 1 into f of x. If we have a function f of x and we divide by 2x plus 1, then our remainder is going to be given by f of minus 1 over 2. And since we're given that our remainder in this case is equal to 2, we have that 2 is equal to f of minus a half. But f minus a half, by our definition of a function f of x, is going to be equal to 2 lots of minus a half all cubed, plus a lots of minus a half all squared, plus b lots of minus a half, plus 5. This gives us 1 quarter a minus 1 half b, and then for our constant, we get plus 19 over 4. And then we rearrange and we get a minus 2b is equal to minus 11. And this is our second equation. Our fifth step is to solve the simultaneous equations to find a. We have our two equations, a plus b is equal to 1. This is our first equation. And a minus 2b is equal to minus 11. This is our second equation. So if we do two lots of the first equation, and then we add the second equation, the b's will cancel out, and we'll get three lots of a from the 2a plus a, and this will be equal to 2 minus 11, which is minus 9. And so we have that a is equal to minus 3. Our sixth step is to substitute the value of a back into one of the original equations to find b. We have our first equation, which says that a plus b is equal to 1. But we also know that a is equal to minus 3. By rearranging, we get that b is equal to 1 minus a. This is going to be 1 minus minus 3. And therefore, we get that b is equal to 4. Our last step is to write down the values of the constants a and b. We have that a is equal to minus 3 and that b is equal to 4. So we can write down our function f of x. And this is going to be 2x cubed minus 3x squared plus 4x plus 5. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you are looking for an amazing A-level math resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snappy smiley face and together let's make A-level maths a walk in the park.